Hello, this is Marcel and I'm here to show you some of the new improvements we have done to Lucid Physics plugin for 3ds Max this week. We will quickly see the new particle flow meshing feature, the new anisotropic fluid options, statistics inside the viewport and the general improvement in the updates of the particle view inside Lucid. First we will look at the new particle flow meshing object and for this I have created a quick setup which has a particle flow object and inside my particle flow view I have the Lucid operator controlling the generation of particles and I have changed the birth operator a little bit to increase the amount of particles that are emitted and I have also increased the length of time for the emission of the particles. I have also created a collision box and this box is a standard sandbox environment that was covered in other videos and we also have a global settings object where I have modified some of the parameters, the most important one of which is the particle radius which I have set to 10 centimeters. So if I just press simulate and scrub my timeline, we can see the particles being generated and behaving as a fluid. However, the problem has been with converting these particles to a mesh and in the previous video we have used Max's standard blob mesh object, but this is not ideal because it is slow and it doesn't give you a lot of control over the meshing features. In Lucid we now have a special particle flow mesher object. Let me exit my simulation and go into the Lucid category of the geometry dropdown. We have the PF mesh object here and if I just click it and I create it somewhere inside the viewport it will create the particle flow measure in the scene so we don't really need to do much more than this one of the important notes to remember for the particle measure is to place it into the coordinate system origin and make sure that it's not rotated in any way for it to have the proper orientation so I have placed it at 0 0 0 if I start my simulation we can now see that the particles are being meshed and we are getting nice quick feedback even though the size of the particles can probably be a lot smaller. So I'm just going to go into particle mesher properties and maybe I can change the granularity to make it a little bit more coarse and as I update the particles you can see that the results are different. I can also go into my global settings and maybe decrease the particle radius from 10 to something like 7 and we'll obviously get different results. So it is up to you to play with this and find the settings that you need. Thankfully Lucy it handles the updates really quickly so you can play around with these settings until you get something that you like. And the particle meshing gives me a nice segue into the next new feature which are the new anisotropic particles and options associated with them. So if I'm just going to create a plane and a sphere to quickly demonstrate the meshing of the fluids, we can see these options in action. Just going to turn off my grid and set the sphere to be a fluid object and I'm going to set the plane to be a static collision object. So if I simulate right now we get the particles that are a little bit too big so I'm just going to go back into my settings and this should reset the particle radius to zero which means that the particles are going to be automatically adjusted by Lucid to have the best size for the resolution which you specify. So if I press simulate right now we get a sphere full of particles and they are simulating as a fluid. So at this point if I go into my Lucid modifier for the fluid mesh and if I uncheck show as particles I can see my mesh right away and this is one of the things that we have added in this build is the ability to switch back and forth and see your results in real time without having to scrub the timeline or doing any other changes. The same way I can go and change my granularity to a different value and I can see right away the updates happen inside the viewport. So if I change my granularity to a smaller value we will get better detail. One other feature we have added is the anisotropic particles. Anisotropic particles basically provide more information to Lucid about how the meshing should be done. So this information also includes the direction in which the particles are traveling and they are being simulated as ellipsoids instead of just spheres. For anisotropic particles to work properly you need to go into the global flex settings and change your anisotropy scale to a different value. So let's say something like 60 and then we can also add some smoothing value for example 0.5. So now if I go back into my Lucid modifier I press simulate to see the changes we can see that the particles are much bigger and the result is also different. So I can scale my particles as well. Right now they are at the scale of one but I can change this to half scale to have them be twice as small and I can play around with these parameters until I get the result that I like. And this is all made possible by the fact that these options are updating in real time. I no longer have to switch in and out of simulation to see these updates happen. Another new feature in this build as you might have noticed is the new statistics 
statistics display inside the viewport. So this statistics display your current CUDA GPU, which is used to simulate flex, and it also shows you the memory usage of your video card. So right now I'm only using two gigabytes out of the eight gigabytes that I have on my video card. And this means that I can probably simulate many more particles at the same time. Finally, we can also see the particle count. And this is probably the most important part of these statistics because it gives you an indication of exactly how many particles are being simulated. And this number includes all of the lucid objects inside the viewport. So if you have something like a cloth or a rigid body object or even an inflatable, all of the particles generated for those objects will be reflected in this overall particles number. So just to demonstrate this, we can see that I have 43,000 particles right now. If I go into my global flex settings and I change my resolution from 30 to something like 50, and then if I press simulate, we can see that our mesh is a lot denser and now I have 195,000 particles instead of just 40,000. So this kind of introduces a little bit of more complexity and just to speed things up, I'm going to go and change this to show us particles just so we can see all of the particles that are being simulated at the same time. My guess is that different video cards will allow for different maximum particle count. I have pushed mine to about 1.3 million particles and incidentally this is also what I set the maximum allowed particles in Lucid to be. So right now if I go and exceed this limit of 1 million and 300,000 particles, the Lucid will simply reject your simulation and not start it in the first place. But if you're feeling adventurous, there is a new max particles parameter inside the Lucid global settings where you can change this maximum limit to anything you like. So if you want 10 million particles, you can change the limit to 10 million. The only thing to beware here is that if you push the limit too hard and if you exceed the video memory size of your video card or other resources on your video card, your display driver might stop working. For some users, this is not a problem because you can go into control panel and just reset your display driver. And in some cases, it even does it by itself. But for other users, this usually means a restart of the computer before things start to work again. So one last thing I wanted to mention in this video is also the fact that we have improved the way that curves are being previewed. I have set up the scene quickly with a curve which has a lucid modifier and it has a 4 by 3 configuration. And I have changed spacing offset to 1.0 just to drive apart the particles that make up the curve. And if I hit simulate and I preview this right now, my curve starts going down. And if I show it as particles, we can see that it is actually being simulated as a grid or a skeleton of particles interconnected between each other. The new cool thing is that we can now toggle the show as particles on and off and we can continue simulate while showing as particles or showing as a curve. And this was not possible in the previous builds. So now I can quickly adjust my spacing offset settings or anything else about my curve and maybe change the configuration and quickly re-simulate my curve and see everything happen pretty quickly. So I hope you found some of this information useful and as always we look forward to your feedback. Thank you for watching.